Hey, everybody, it's Aldo Gandhi, and I just want to let you know really quickly that our swag shop is reopened. DeepDishTees.com is where you go, and that's tees with T-E-E-S. Clever name, guys. They're the new home of our merchandise. You can get T-shirts. You can get caps. You can get coffee mugs. You can get hoodies. You can get all sorts of good stuff, and you'll help out the bar room with the purchase. So head over to DeepDishTees.com. The following program is suitable for all audiences. Science Fiction on the Barroom Network. I'm Salim Sutterwala, and I'm joined with by my co-host and friend, Carl Ames. Carl, how's it going? I'm great. How's it going? It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. We skipped a <laughs> week. Um, we had uh, just uh, figured we'd take a break. I know we had a few shows we've done, uh, so kind of just getting into a groove here. Did you have a good weekend? Did you uh, do anything exciting? Uh, nothing in particular, just working, uh, nothing really special, cleaned up a little bit, uh, I was telling Aldo, finally got my Sentinel in the shot, so we can finally take a look, and it's going to be there for, nice. hopefully, forever, uh, nice. just clean, cleaning things up a little bit, so, yeah. Nice, nice, yeah, uh, my weekend was good, too, just, I've been going to, like, I feel like uh, every Bulls home opener. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, or, yeah. uh, sorry, Bulls home game, I should say. I went to the home opener, but then like I went to the game against the Pistons. I didn't go to the Knicks game, and then I went to the game against the Jazz. So uh, it was fun. Uh, Bulls have started off well, and I think uh, I think I had a good weekend overall. Cool. You um, have a uh, you have season tickets or just no been, no uh, just, going whenever you can. Okay, just been going. You know, no season tickets. Uh, I did. I won tickets. For the Pistons game, but just okay. uh, yeah, I ended up getting um, those tickets. So it, it's just kind of a weird coincidence in the sense that I'd been just going to these games. Uh, it was just well, the, a friend of mine came into town on Saturday, so that's why we went to the game on the uh, for the Jazz. But yeah, it just uh, but it's, it's been fun. Yeah, definitely been fun. But yeah, we definitely have a really good show planned today as well. Uh, we're just going to do a, a few bit different things. Uh, there's not one track of uh, subject that we're going to stick to for the most part. But uh, kind of, again, the way we started last show, just a couple of quick uh, uh, things uh, that are happening with the MCU schedule. We just wanted to talk about that uh, at first. Uh, I know, Carl, you had some things you wanted to say about the schedule that MCU is kind of shifting around. Yeah, last time uh, we we briefly touched on it, like uh, real quick, because like it happened the day that we were recording the the last episode that um, the MCU future like Phase Four movies and most likely the Disney Plus shows as well um, all got shifted a slot, and by slot I mean uh, Marvel has dates that their movies are going to be coming out on, and you know we already know what those dates are they're like reserved for them or they they you know reserve them for themselves and originally like the next mcu movie you know outside of spider-man which is still uh currently coming out in december uh december 17th 
Uh, still got Hawkeye, the Hawkeye series still coming out later this month. Uh, but for the most part, everything next year got shifted about five weeks or so, or uh, just a shifted a, sl- a slot, I should say. So um, the first movie, uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, was supposed to come out around mid-March, and it got shifted five weeks to uh, to May now. So, uh, And then everything else, because it was going to be the next movie after that, would have been Thor. Um, that was going to come out in May, and now it's coming out July 8th. And then Black Panther, Black Panther 2, or Black Panther Wakanda Forever is what it's called, was July. Now it's November. And then the Marvels, it's the next Captain Marvel movie, was going to be November uh, of 2022. Now it's going to be February. And then so on. Guardians 3 will be in May of 2023. And then the next Ant-Man movie will be July of 2023. Yeah, yeah. So definitely, these movies get shifted. Just I, I think MCU does that because obviously there was some production stuff that happened with COVID, so they actually originally had to change things around. And then when uh, Fandom came, DC Fandom was announced, and they announced all their scheduling. So then MCU was like, you know what, we want to shift ours a little bit, so. Uh, we can maximize essentially is maximizing their profits. <laughs> so that's all. It's all mm-hmm. it really comes down to for the most part. It's not. I don't think it's anything to do with like you know they had issues on set or anything like that. Well, they did um, announce another thing uh, in regards to that. So um, yes, COVID definitely played a, a part in, t- in this decision, and I, I don't think it's a coincidence that they announced it after Fandom. But one another thing they're actually doing is. Um, they're doing some reshoots for Doctor Strange. They're doing two oh, months of that. they're doing two months worth of reshoots for Doctor Strange. So they essentially are changing almost the entirety of the movie. Um, so oh, interesting. One of, yeah. So yeah, I found out that like uh, the Scarlet Witch, Elizabeth Olsen's her. Uh, they were already doing reshoots, and she had wrapped on reshoots in September, and she even posted pictures on Instagram. We're done with reshoots, and then they announced this, and they were going to do two more months of reshoots. So. Um, I think it's based off of, again, uh, the delays, the COVID stuff, they need some more time, but they also are going to change the story. And then um, Benedict Cumberbatch was interviewed saying they're going to make some changes to make the movie even better. So it's actually going to have pretty much be almost a different movie from what they originally planned. So we don't know exactly what that means, or how it's going to work. But uh, I mean, we can speculate they're just going to try to involve Scarlet Witch even more or just change how, you know, however they're doing, whatever they're doing with their kids. Uh, if Spider-Man's going to be in it or uh, whatever the crossover, the multiverse stuff is going to be, uh, they're just going to make it even more expensive than what they were originally planned. Or maybe they're dumbing it down. Who knows? But uh, yeah, I think they're going to start reshooting in December. And then uh, they'll give them a couple months to rework all of the special effects and stuff. Oh, interesting. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I was, uh, I was wondering about that. I thought, I thought that were just kind of delays for other reasons, but I didn't realize that they were actually redoing a lot of the scenes and stuff like that, and kind of changing the storyline around. Yeah, I, I hope that we can at least, uh, like, in DVD extras or bonus features or something like that, it'll tell us what the original plot line was. Um, because there's still like a rumor that it's going to be the main villain, Shuma Grath, so, um, or at least be a important part of the movie, which I hope so. I would like to see that, uh, either that or Nightmare, but all um, right, you know, one of those two would be, um, satisfactory for me, right? And you know, it's funny you mentioned Nightmare because I thought Nightmare was going to be the main villain for uh, the Wando Vision uh, series, like, or not the Mm -hmm. main, like. Like the main villain, like introducing the end as a tease that just set up, uh, Doctor Strange. Right, right, right. Yeah, that that's gonna like because you know him controlling the whole, her whole, um, you know, real fake reality or whatever that you know she created, but it was kind of also she didn't have full control of it. So, but obviously we find out Agatha Harkness was also involved in that, Mm -hmm. um, somehow. And but yeah, it all it all uh, worked out in for that, but. Kind of moving on, uh, you and I both saw Dune. Yeah. Uh, we watched it. Uh, it came out, I'll say, two weeks ago, right? Two two weeks? Just about, yeah. 
you know, about two weeks ago. And we do have a, a final trailer that they released that we want to kind of start the sh uh, that process out with. So the outsiders ravage our land. Their cruelty to my people is all I've known. So you're going tomorrow? Yes, I'm going tomorrow to advance him. I'd like you to take me with you. Are you can try to give me court martial. Can I trust you with something? I've been having dreams about a girl falling in battle. Felt like a vision. Dreams make good stories, but everything important happens when we're awake. To the future of House Atreides. You have to be ready. There is no call we do not answer. There is no faith that we betray. They're not human, they're brutal. What if I'm not dead? You'll still be the only thing I ever needed you to be. Come on! My son. Let's fight like demons. It's not safe for you here. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Uh, Carl, I'll let you start off first. Uh, what were your uh, thoughts on on the movie overall? Like the cast, how it was acted, um, thoughts on like the cinematography and just the movie in general, how the pacing, how you thought it went. Um, overall, I thought most of the actors did a pretty decent job. Uh, no real complaints or uh, anything standing out as like an issue. Um, I think visually it was a pretty nice movie. It was a really good movie. I love all the, you know, you know, it, it, it's not as visually impressive as say Star Wars could be, which I guess we'll, we might talk, talk a little bit more about Star Wars in comparison, but, um, you know, you are in the desert and it's just a lot of sand and stuff. So it's not like there's lots of visual effects that you can do with that. Um, it's just sand, but it is still uh, well shot and um, re a really nice looking movie. It is a, a pretty good movie overall. Um, I guess I can go into some impressions in general. So, um, and in general, like this Dune franchise, I knew literally absolutely nothing about it uh, going into this. I watched it about a week ago. And honestly, didn't even hear about the movie until maybe at, at most a month ago, because uh, I think it was the the director had said something on Twitter about um, like the MCU, like saying people don't like. It, I can't remember the exact words, but I think it was just how a lot of directors are kind of uh, I want to say jealous of the MCU success and people go see those movies and nothing else. I think it was something like that. Um, and then that, that got attention. Cause that's what you do to hype up. your not MCU movie nowadays, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, that's when I first even heard about it. And then I guess I figured I might as well watch it. And especially with this, uh, uh, science fiction that we're doing, but, um, immediate impressions were this feels like star Wars. This feels like it, it reminded me of star Wars. It reminded me of. Uh, a game called Final Fantasy X 
And it reminded me of um, something else. I can't quite think of it, but it's not so much like the, the game is exactly like this movie, but it's really more the sandworm. The sandworm reminds me of the sandworm in that game. Um, but uh, the Star Wars stuff, it's just, it felt like Star Wars to me. And then I didn't know that this movie this franchise really predates star wars by a lot the book for it came out in 1965 and then there was the first movie for it, it was 1980 where'd it go 80 something like that uh and there was a 2000 series so it it's pretty much star wars before star wars without all of the stars <laughs> at right, least right. for the first movie you know uh, without all of the jet fighters and the lightsabers and stuff um yeah, so what what did you think about it? Yeah, so I, I had, like you, I had never read the book or I knew anything about this, where I did some research to see, so I can have a bit little understanding of the novel. Um, and after watching this movie, I, it's essentially almost like a half movie because the mm -hmm. novel it, it, is just like the part one, right? So um, there's a lot, it's kind of slow paced, a, part, a lot of it's slow paced, the movie in general. Um, because again, because it covers like only the movie, this movie probably only covers like half the novel. Um, and so the movie inherently la lacks a lot of action back scenes and things like that. Now they did for, have, yeah, land now they, for it being like two and a half hours, two and a half like, hours, yeah, yeah, right. So, um, in that regards, like you know, there's a lot of slow paces where you have to make sure you're paying attention to dialogue, which obviously that's not a problem, but it just kind of makes you um there's a lot of you know interesting conversations especially like they're speaking in obviously different languages so you have to you know pay attention to like a lot of subtitles you don't want to miss that because there's key parts in the movie that mm -hmm. are very important that explain later on uh so you don't want to miss those key parts um like sometimes you watch a movie like i feel like sometimes you'll watch a movie that are like this and if you miss a certain part you'll be fine later on in the movie but right. this is this is one of those movies, hundred percent. You cannot like zone out or like do anything else. Make sure you're pop, well, paying attention for every part of the movie. Yeah, it was tough because, like I said, I was cleaning. I was trying, you know, cleaning all my stuff. And I was trying to watch this while I was cleaning, and every time I turned away to wipe something, that's when they started doing the subtitles. I was like, crap. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now no, I gotta exactly. read this. Exactly. So yeah, like so. So to me, overall, the cin cin cinematography was great. Like visually, it's everything is like like. Very well done. Um, I thought supporting characters like the actors Duncan Idaho, played by Jason Momoa, Momoa, I should say, uh, Gurney Halleck, uh, plays by played by Josh Brolin, rival like the rivals like Baron Val Vladimir Harkonnen. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Harkonnen, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, like it's like he's like a <laughs> convincingly like they add like a glutinous like a big guy uh stalin uh scars guard uh who's in mcu um he's he plays uh thor and he's in the thor series um and then his nephew he's a beast rabin is played by dave bastista you have javier braden and zendaya who also make appearances in the movie so a lot of these characters they introduced um, are small, they have super small roles in this first movie. Uh, they're mm -hmm. just kind of getting a taste of who the, they are. And I'm sure these characters will be have more screen time in the second movie. Especially, it's funny because to me, the way it was like, because you see a lot of Timothy Chalamet, because he is the main character, so you see a lot of him in the movie, in this first movie. Uh, and the way they were having Zendaya kind of go with him everywhere, it, it made me think like she was going to be in this movie a right. lot more, but she's mm -hmm. barely in it. Barely. Uh, or she's barely in this movie. So, um, but yeah, it, it, you know, like I said, the characters, like the, I, I think, you know, everyone does a great job in their role. Uh, you know, and like I said, I think we'll see them again. And I'll say overall, Dune is like, again, a very much like a half story because it is based off of a, a, a giant novel and they were trying to uh, for one reason or another obviously hollywood has their interest in making money so they try to you know squeeze um as much as they can out of like kind of like lord of the rings i'll say like the, like when you think about that the first movie lord for lord of the rings uh the fellowship of the ring it's very slow paced because it's just the introductory of the the movie right so it's kind of a slow paced movie 
there it's not a lot of action or anything like that involved. Um, I should say, Cheryl, sorry, Harry Potter, uh, the last Harry Potter movie, um, uh, uh, where they split the book into two movies. Mm-hmm. So the first half of the movie is a lot of not a lot of action, it's a lot of talking, they're doing a lot of you know, just walking around and things like that. So that is comparable in this sense. Um, so like I said, you know, there's a lot of characters and for this movie of, to my knowledge that I did research on there, that they still have to get to introduce, which I'm sure they'll do in the second movie. Um, and I almost, it almost kind of, it feels unfair to review it as a standalone, uh, because it's like I said, it's an intro and there are more movies that are going to come out, but you know, I thought it's a kind of did a good job of setting the stage. And it gets a lot. It was. It gets far more right. I feel like in the movie than, um, than like like I said. I think there's more positives than there are negatives. Uh, like for for the slow plays, like I said, well acted, cinematography is great. There are very important parts and intriguing parts in the movie. So overall, I would say like I would give it maybe like a solid B. Um, overall, as that would be my grade if I would if I was giving a grade out for the movie for this first part. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I can see that. I mean, for me, like, I, I agree with you on all those points. Um, but for me, it just didn't have a hook, like something, like you said, there were some intriguing parts. Um, I actually, uh, again, like more star Wars comparisons. I, and again, this technically predates star Wars, but I really liked, um, their abilities that they had with the the voice is what they call so they had the right, ability right. to uh jedi mind trick basically and tell people what to do by just just saying it kill you know kill him or unfree me or uh goes you know rub your head and pat your stomach or whatever at the same <laughs> time you know and, but they have to hit it at a right pitch a right tone and that's what um the main character was like struggling with because he was learning it and apparently i mean i guess uh it's mostly women that uh, i think that's what i picked up that it's usually the women that has this ability but right. he's like one of if not the first male to have that uh because yeah some, something like that i'm again i'm not super familiar with the lore but i am um, i like that i like the idea of the spice even though it wasn't really like heavily concentrated on it was still you know uh, their mineral it was like their uh um uh, i think i'm using the word correctly mcguffin of the uh, of the the book of the franchise whatever, but um still it was cool i wish it was like a little bit more important but still um you know there's certainly a lot of lore there and i think this movie is one of those if the second movie is like awesome and just spectacular big blockbuster sort of thing and then has a lot of uh, good climaxing mo- moments to it then it'll make this first movie a lot better because it'll yeah. be like like this movie is setting up stuff that we don't as people that aren't familiar with the material we don't know what they're setting up so we're not feeling that satisfaction. Like when we watch MCU movies, we 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 know the comic books, we know the stories, so we know what they're setting up. So we're like eager in anticipation for what's going to happen next. Right now, we're both in the dark. So if the second movie has something that's really satisfac- satisfactory, the first movie will be better by proxies. Even like Endgame, just exactly like Endgame, where even though we knew what was going to happen in Endgame, uh, what they were setting up in Infinity War, I actually like Infinity War better as a movie than Endgame because of all of the setup. Because I right. know what's going to happen. The climax was great, but the setup because it did so much and it just it brought everything together. Infinity War to me is better than Endgame, even though the satisfaction came out of Endgame. No, I get that. Yeah, that's a good point. I guess like I I assumed so much. Because I I knew that they're making a second movie and it was announced. Mm-hmm. And although if, I think I, I sent you a link on if you want to pull that up really quick that the second movie was teased by Tim Timothy Chalamet. I that's why I assume like when the fact that they announced that and I don't, I don't think he it was a coincidence that they announced it so soon uh, because I that that you get an idea that yeah there's going to be more. Um, 
more to come and it is going to tie in a lot of what maybe we're not sure uh, of here. Because like you said, I, I think when you think about it, let's say if you've never referencing MCU, uh, certain things, let's say you've never read a lot of the comics and stuff, you'll, you would also get confused. Like, well, this is weird. How are they doing this? But so now we don't know what they're going to do in the next one. Like, how are they going to fix this? That's, I think that's kind of like part of the process really. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, like I said, you know, I, I, I guess you and I are like, you, you, who, who, was, between Cisco and Ebert, who are the, who are the tough one? Like you're the tough critic. Oh, I don't the, remember. <laughs> I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, the softy, I guess, <laughs> of, of the two. <laughs> When we're when we're uh, reviewing these movies here, so I, I think that's a theme that we got going on here. I think. I guess you can you can be good cop, I'll be bad cop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah, it's good. I think it's a good mix here. That I think I'm like the guys like you know yeah you guys did a good job good job and on the back is like you can do better. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, they're definitely. I mean, like of course, like they spent some. I don't know how much money, but they definitely spent some money on this movie with the cast they have and the shoots and i don't know i mean i i know uh jason momoa had um there was like some behind the behind the scenes clips of him when he was fighting like do, about to do one of his fight scenes and they were recording that right when game of thrones the last episode was about to air and that was a little while ago so they've been shooting this movie for some time and uh you know, like I said, they, they're spending money plenty, cl clearly. Like, they expected it to be a big movie with this cast and those effects and, and so on. Like, of course, they're going to have a, a second movie finishes out. Because if they were to end it here, th that would be, like, a huge waste of money. Unless this movie was, like, a, a complete flop, which I don't think it is. I haven't checked any of those numbers, but I'm sure it is enough t money to keep the thing going. Even, even the cast, when you consider, like it's such a it's such a strong cast. Like all the people they got for it is are like well, have a lot of success in their careers, and they've done a lot of good projects. And you know, it, it would be surprising that they, they didn't make a second one for for uh, for this. But yeah, like I said, that those are our thoughts on on Dune. Um, I think we'll we'll move on now, uh, to Uncharted. Now, technically, it's not a sci science fiction movie, but it's fantasy, and we kind of yeah, like to. Well, well, maybe. I mean, I consider it what. Uh, uh, I mean, maybe maybe technically, the lines of what a science fiction movie is, but yeah. I suppose. I mean, it, 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 I, they don't have it under that genre. Let's put it that way. But like I yeah. said, I think I, I count this in a sense as I like like fantasy type of movies too. Like in a sense that too. So I I I, I definitely am very interested in watching this. Uh, they did release a trailer on that, so we'll show that right now, just so if in case anyone has not seen it yet. There are places out there you can't find on any map. They're not gone. They're just lost. Hey, kid. A little young for a bartender, aren't you? A little old for prom, aren't you? Is everything in here? Why the map? This path of Ferdinand Magellan took to sail around the world. You know your history. It's the biggest treasure that's never been found. Five billion, easy. I think you're here because you're your brother. Wait, you know my brother, Sam? Find that gold. You find him too. Yes, I keep on. Who the hell is this? I'm a friend of Solly's. Sally doesn't have any friends. I should know I'm one of them. You are a collector. Well, I dabble. I don't dabble. My family has been looking for this fortune for a very long time. So much blood. I'm pretty sure he's just threatened to kill me. But don't touch your ear like that. You look like an idiot. You have no idea who you partnered with. I've been dreaming about this stuff since I was a kid. My brother Sam left one final clue. Oh, God! Oh my 
should not come out to play with a big boy's wee because you're about to get a proper Scottish welcome. What? Oh, crap! Exclusively in movie theaters. So yeah, that's that's the trailer. Um, so again, I I don't play video games, so I've never played this video game. Uh, I don't know a lot about the video game itself. I have friends that play it and that really like it. Um, uh, one one interesting I think I did learn about this movie. Um, originally, oh, well, not originally. If he he wasn't originally picked to play the movie, but a lot of the fans of the game wanted uh, Nathan Fillion to be casted as Nathan Drake simply because uh, he looks a lot like <laughs> Nathan Drake. When you look at the, uh, uh, the, the, the the video game character, he looks a lot like that. Uh, same kind of features and everything like that. And also when um, Tom Holland was announced because he's so young, they were just kind of like, uh, Nathan Drake is probably an older person. And, and I, you know, when they mentioned in, uh, when Mark Wahlberg makes fun of his age, I thought, I thought maybe they were kind of poking fun at that part because Nathan Drake is supposed to be, I think, an older character. Um, and Tom Holland, um, looks like, you know, he's a college student, essentially. Um, mm -hmm. he, looks, he looks like he's in his like teen, late teens early 20s at most so yeah that was an interesting aspect of of the movie i learned as far as um as far as the characters are, are and, the, and the cast is concerned yeah so i have played these games they are actually some of my favorite games uh in general the the it's a playstation game playstation only i'll i think they're actually coming to pc at some point but um yeah, the franchise game started in 2007, and there's been four main, four main story games and some like side games in between, and then like uh, an additional game because uh, you know Uncharted one, two, three, four, and then there's Lost Legacy, uh, which came out as kind of like an uh, uh, an addition to Uncharted four, but. Uh, in general, they're really great games. They're incredibly fun. Uh, so what I would compare them to both the game and what you can expect from the movie is it has a very Indiana Jones kind of vibe uh, and kind of character that Nathan Drake is. Um, and then the whole premise is, again, it's like Indiana Jones, which for the record, I have actually never seen any Indiana Jones. So I'm making this reference really? with full faith that i'm correct that it's indiana jones like but um i could be 100 percent wrong i'm just gonna die on that hill um a young but, a young i could see a young harrison ford playing nathan drake so right that that's why I, like it has a <laughs> vibe that's what i'm saying it's a it's a vibe so what it is is um you are nathan or you play as nathan drake and you know nathan drake's in and you know the movie um he is an adventurer, treasure seeker sort of type of character. And what he's looking for is all of these, you know, so-called myths of lost treasure or uh, hidden cities and things like that that are supposedly, you know, not real, just legendary. He knows that there's like there's some solid theories there. There's some actual evidence that this stuff exists and he goes around he he's just an expert on um ancient cities and ancient treasures and stuff like that he he goes out and seeks these treasures and you know some smaller treasures he will you know just as like an in-game thing he might find a gold chain somewhere okay i'll sell this later and make some money but he's really after the big thing that's not supposed to exist so um that's what the pretty much what his deal is for most of the games and and you have like the, the Antonio Banderas character who is pretty much, I would, I would say, I don't know who he is actually playing, but it's just a character for this movie. Um, they're just going after the same thing. That's a, just another recurring thing that usually happens in the games that there's he's Nathan's looking for something. And then there's always someone else looking for the same thing. And then they just kind of butt heads and have a conflict, whether they fight it out before they get there or, 
maybe Nathan was hired by so and so to find it, and Nathan goes off and does his own thing, you know, stuff like that. And then, oh, you you found the thing, now hand it over, or we'll kill you, sort of right. um, stuff like that. And um, you know, uh, these games they're very very successful. They're pretty much one of, if not the, uh, you know, maybe like top five um, franchises from for the PlayStation brand of games. Um, personally, I think Uncharted 2 is the best game, is one of the best games I've ever played. I haven't played them in a long time, um, which is very weird for me because usually my favorite games, I play them quite often, but I've actually only played Uncharted 2 once. I've played the first Uncharted maybe four or five times. Um, Uncharted 3 once, Uncharted 4 once, and Lost Legacy just once. So I probably will dive into them again sometime next year because i've been trying to do it for a while now just kind of have a big gaming backlog see all that stuff right there right those are all video games every single little <laughs> label there uh and then that's just not even everything that i own so i have a lot of a lot of catching up to do nice so for for this uh movie so they're not taking anything from any the storylines or anything it's completely uh original it's not anything from the video games at all do, that you know of so what they're doing with this is that it's actually a prequel to the games. So oh okay uh, okay yeah. So that's why we have a younger Nathan Drake, and that's why we have uh, Tom Holland playing Nathan Drake as opposed to a Nathan Fillion, which I completely uh, side with the fandom. I would I'll love to see Nathan Fillion in that role because again he does look exactly like him, uh, but it's also another situation like. Robert Downey Jr. and Tony Stark, where they are not just uh, similar in appearance, but similar in personality. Like Nathan Fillion's personality and acting style is literally Nathan Drake. Is just there. It's the same kind of situation. But the problem with Nathan, uh, Nathan Fillion is. Although he's a successful actor and a respected one, and he's pretty good, he's still very niche and very, you know, small. I wouldn't say small, but just in, in respect to him. But he's just not, not a at the top. Yeah, he's yeah, not, not a blockbuster. Block. Actor. You know, he's not going to put butts in seats. Uh, he's only going to get the attention of those who really want to see this movie because it's based off the game. They really like it. And maybe they really like Nathan, but the amount of people that like Nathan is dwarfed by the amount of people that like Tom Holland. So right. you got that going for you. And also, I mean, I, I, again, I've actually uh, kind of uh, just side, side sideways go for a second. I used to have a, my own website and blog and stuff. And it was 2016 when I did this. I actually made a, a article on my blog and a video on my YouTube channel about Tom Holland being cast for this role back in 2016. The movie yeah, had already been in development for that long and had right. gone through a lot of di different directors for a long time. So it's been it's been a long time coming that this movie. So like Sony really wants this movie to do well. Like they got Tom to do it, they got Mark Wahlberg here, Antonio Banderas. Those are the biggest names, sure. I'm actually surprised that they they're, they're you know convinced Antonio Banderas. I guess he's not too busy these days, but um, yeah, like I, I I think that's pretty much why we're getting a, a younger Nathan instead of them trying to go one for one uh, from the games. I think that's also because if if it's a success, then with Tom Holland, they could do like four movies and uh like you know eight years from now as he aging and then they can maybe do some of those storylines from the mo uh, games itself as he's get becoming an older nathan drake mm -hmm. um because right obviously right now he, like you said if it's a prequel to the uh movies uh to the games itself that that could be setting up as well so they're they're anticipating like okay if this becomes a success we want to get a nathan drake that we know we can have for a long time Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then like I said, with it being a prequel, that does mean that we're most likely not going to see character Elena Fisher. Um, Elena is first introduced in the first game, so she doesn't even know Nathan at that point. Maybe there's a possibility of a cameo, 
like just coincidentally uh, we're in the same party but we just don't know each other sort of thing can happen but for the most part uh, i doubt we'll see elena and she just be she does become uh close with nathan but she's just like a reporter and uh, she was just with him on on uh i can't uh, it's been a while since i played the first game but she's just a reporter she's not involved in any of this stuff but she was there and then they ended up getting acquainted and she uh, one of my favorite characters because she's not just some damsel in distress she's not just uh, someone that's in the way but just someone that was his wrong wrong place basically but um uh, was reliable and a great support she you know give her a gun she will shoot it and even if she's not an expert at it um she can take care of herself enough and she was really good and they did eventually you know become uh have a relationship and, and settle down together um so i really like them as a couple really like her as a character but probably not gonna see her unfortunately maybe like i said if they're setting up uh future movies where they might actually adapt the game maybe the next movie um will take place in the future but they would have to probably age up mark Wahlberg because his character is sully uh his character is actually quite old in the games um i don't know exactly how old but probably in the 60s or 70s he's full grayed out and uh not the spring chicken that he used to be but still out there uh jumping off of cliffs and helping out uh, Nathan Drake as much as ca as he can uh, to find treasure and, and you know get money and stuff but um, that you know that that Sully I'm actually more mad about Mark Wahlberg as Sully and then I am Tom Holland as Nathan Drake because I would rather see an older uh, gentleman than uh, Mark Wahlberg Okay, interesting, interesting. But yeah, I think I mean I'm excited about the movie just because like it's it's down my alley, yeah. uh, the type of genre and the type of uh, everything involved. I, I like I'm a Tom Holland fan, um, so um, I, I don't know much about the character, so I don't have any objections on <laughs> who plays who. Mm -hmm. uh, I, didn't, I so uh, Victor Sullivan is an old. Uh, character like older even like even th than like an, uh, Nathan Drake in a sense. Oh yeah, significantly. Like I think Nathan is probably in his thirties or forties. Um, off the top of my head, maybe I can look at it real quick. But uh, Sully is much older. We got him maybe twenty or, or thirty years. Nathan's senior. Okay. Uh, well, so. I mean, technically it works out because. Well, Mark Wahlberg is probably about roughly that much older than Tom exactly, so, exactly. So, I, if, so if it is a prequel, I think that works out well as far as the age different age gap between the two characters uh, would be concerned. So I think I think yeah, it will be interesting. It'll be fun to see. Uh, obviously, Antonio Banderas. He, like you said, he doesn't do a lot of movies right nowadays, but yeah. it's it, it'll be fun to see him in. And it looks like he's the antagonist in this. So. Um, yeah, it'll be it'll be fun um, to 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 catch this movie and and we'll learn more about it as as we go on because I think they've they're not they're not nearly done shooting it either. So oh yeah, there's um, there's still to my knowledge, I think there there there's still a lot left. So it's it com it's coming out. I think what like um, mid uh, two thousand twenty two. No, it yeah. says February. Oh, is it February? Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure. I, I wasn't sure if it was that soon because I know, like you said, there was a lot of issues about re, um, about directors and things like that mixing things up. So I, I wasn't sure if it was coming out like later in in part of 2022. But yeah, that's about uh, that's about all we have for today. Um, I think. Did you have any any final thoughts that you wanted to uh, add in? Uh, for our show or anything else that uh, that just came to your head uh just just uh one quick nod for the uncharted um movies that like if you saw it towards the end of the trailer uh where all the cargo was going out of the the airplane and and tom you know nathan drake was strapped to it and stuff like that and has to jump back in stuff like that is one of like the calling cards if you will of those games where they have this really spectacular or elaborate 
uh, in particular, like the beginning of the game, they put you in situations exactly like that. So they put that in the movie as just a, a nod or Easter egg to the game. So um, it's really thrilling. And those are like really highly coveted uh, video game sequences within the uh, the history of video games. Like all of the games have something like that really spectacular set pieces that are uh, really fun to play and have a lot of good, interesting character dialogue and stuff like that. Um, so we could see a couple of things like that, not just that one scene, but hopefully a few other situations like that without throughout the movie. Yeah, definitely. It'll be, it'll be fun to see. Um, I think for me, uh, like I said, I, 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 overall I liked Dune and I'm excited for Uncharted. Um, as far as not related to any of this, I, I, I'm sure we'll get to the, get to this eventually done once we get more information, but I know they're supposed to be leaking a second Spider-Man No Way Home trailer at some point, but they keep teasing it and you see all these site. Uh, I don't know if you follow a lot of these uh, Spider-Man No Way Home like insider accounts, but they keep you know saying there's something supposed to drop, but then it doesn't drop. So we'll we'll find out what happens with them. But yeah, that's pretty much a wrap for today's episode. Uh, obviously, please follow Carl at Ninja Chortles, and then you can follow me at Science Fliction. Um, and then we'll be back next week. All right. See you guys next time.